Mara is an online editor that has specific tools for creating subtitles for a video. It is also designed for crowd-based use, meaning you can easily work together as a team to translate and proof the same video. In this tutorial, we're going to consider four phases, transcribing, syncing, editing text and timing, and the final edit. After you've created a free account on Amara, you can click Start Subtitling. And here it asks you to enter a video URL. And so I'm going to paste the video URL of a video on YouTube and hit Begin. And this now creates this page for your video. And from here, you're able to upload other subtitles or, in this case, add a new language. And so this video is in English and we're subtitling it into English. I hit continue. Now I'm inside the subtitle editor. So from here we're going to look at a few of the hotkeys that are going to be important uh, to know how to use. And as you can see up here at your keyboard controls, tab allows you to play and pause the video. Shift plus tab allows you to skip back and then shift plus enter inserts a line break. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start subtitling. John chapter 3. I just hit enter. Verse to 16. To go to the next line. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. I come to this... Now, at that point, I hit Tab. Obviously, uh, I got behind, so there you go. You hit Tab, you're able to pause the video, and now I need to get the exact wording again, and so I'll hit Shift-Tab, and it's on 36 seconds. Now, it just went back. You see that every time I hit it? That he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish. Only John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I come to this verse not knowing what to say about it, and that's... So there you go. Hotkeys are very important um, in the midst of doing this. Another thing you want to do is pay attention to the length of the subtitles. Try not to make them too too short, like verse 16. I mean, is that is that too short? Now, since it's such a there's so much space between this line and that line, we need to have that by itself. And that's not going to make it difficult for the translator to translate that. And then we don't want to keep, we could add this to here and then remove that, but then you have a long gap. So that's not worth it. But you want to pay attention to the length of the subtitle to not have it too long either. And uh, it can be helpful to think in clauses as much as possible or about the idea. You know, is this a clear idea here that could be translated? Or am I splitting up the lines and it's going to make it difficult for the translator to actually translate that line? Obviously, a lot of times you're going to need to make two lines if the speaker is speaking quickly. And on Amara, it has recommendations over here. Line length shouldn't exceed 42 characters. Add a line break if necessary. These are recommendations. Does this have to be followed exactly? Uh, no, it does not. But you definitely don't want to go a whole lot further than the recommendation. I mean, this line being five characters over, it, that's not a big issue. But if you went up to like 80 characters or something, then you, you, know, you would have a problem. Now, sometimes you won't be able to understand something that the speaker says, and you can add a subtitle that says unintelligible to indicate this. And it could be, you know, he says, and that is... That is for a couple of reasons. And then you add unintelligible right there. You couldn't hear what he said. Or, you know, if the whole thought 
it's just hard to understand. You just don't put any of it there because none of it is worth being uh, translated. Uh, same thing, at times you're going to have people who they will begin a thought or a sentence and they will not complete that thought. And you could just add a line that says incomplete thought. And it's not worth the translator translating you know, a phrase like, and I was thinking, and then they just go in a totally different direction. Uh, that's not going to help the viewer in the end if it was such an incomplete thought. So those are some considerations in the first phase of transcribing. Now, next we're going to look at the second phase, and that is syncing the text to the video, the timing aspect of this. So let's imagine that we've finished this entire transcript, and I'm going to hit Yes, Start Syncing. And now you can see up here, Amara says to start a subtitle, press the down arrow. To end it, press the up arrow. Now we recommend rather than hit the down arrow, uh, that somewhat is unnecessary. Doing this makes the subtitles harder to read because there's the gap. And so we don't recommend having gaps uh, in, in most cases because you want to give the viewer a longer period of time to read the translation. And, and sermons at times are very rapid fire, quick um, um, speed. And so this will also eliminate another step in the process. So we're going to go ahead and um, hit tab to get this going. And, and right away, he's going to say John chapter 3. And so then I will hit the arrow down to start the subtitle. John chapter 3. Verse 16. Now I'm going to end that subtitle. Because of how long the delay is here. This is a unique this is an example where you do want to end it. Yeah. John 3:16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I come to this verse not knowing what to say about it and that's that so as you can see I just I just messed up here um which is good for everyone's sake so I just messed up when I hit the arrow and so I'm going to go ahead and do uh, shift tab to go back and and actually that undid uh the subtitle I just wanted to go back in the video not go back like that so let me hit tab again what to say about it and that's that's for a couple reasons so let me just pause this. So you can scrub along here to edit this. Obviously, I'm going to edit that. We don't need John chapter 3. People have had plenty of time to read that. Then we get to verse 16. Verse 16, okay. for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes. So right there, you can... You can move this along as you're editing it. Love the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not. And I'm just using whoever my mouse to do this. Whoever believes in him should not this. perish, but have eternal life. Now right here, I want to extend this so they have a longer time to read it. You never want the start of a subtitle showing up before it needs to show up. So now he's about to say, I come to this verse. And so we could leave this up if we want if we want them to have time to read the entire thing. I come to this verse not knowing what to say about it and that's and then I'm going to drag that out. And it's not letting me drag that out cuz that was the last subtitle and so therefore I would need to Hit play and, and hit for a that. a couple reasons. Yeah, that hotkey. Okay, so basically I just quickly edited that. So now the subtitles show up like this. 316, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, one thing, uh, you know, obviously here, I, I should have whoever believes in him on one line uh, because that's a thought and then delete it from here. Should not perish but have eternal life that's going to make it a whole lot easier on the translation Son, whoever believes in him should not perish. we'll just move that over a little bit 
believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now, one thing you'll notice here is Amara color codes captions. Uh, for example, the blue captions are those of appropriate time length, right? And then we've got these um, orange ones. And the orange subtitles are too short and that they have too many characters and words for the amount of time. In other words, these will be harder for the reader, you know, to comprehend before the next subtitle appears. Now, obviously, as I'm showing this, I don't have an entire video done. If I did, then I would recommend going through that entire video rather than just stopping and pausing throughout this entire thing. Uh, go back later and proof through everything. Uh, and, and make adjustments then. If you do that now, it's just going to take a lot of time as you're stopping constantly. And this brings us into the third phase, which is editing the text and the timing, which you kind of just saw me do. And um, during this phase, you're basically passing through the entire video and checking your transcription for typos, uh, misspelled words. Uh, you're also making adjustments that you need to do like I just did by taking the in him and putting it on the other line so there is a good clause or a, a full thought there. And you're adjusting the timings to make sure that they're uh, more accurately matching up with the speaker in the video. This is also a good opportunity to try to make as much of the orange um, colored subtitles, the subtitles are showing up too fast, to make those go away and make as many captions blue as possible. Now you're not always going to be able to get rid of all the orange uh, subtitles, but you know you want to try to do as many as you can. This is going to help the reader uh, in the finished product be able to read everything. And for phase four, you can do a final edit. Now this can be an optional phase, but it also can be the quickest phase and well worth the uh, few extra minutes it takes to complete it. As one uh, transcriber said, she said, I find that after these first three phases of transcribing, syncing, and editing, it's very easy for my eyes to overlook words that I have misspelled. So I like to go to the first subtitle of the video, click on it so that my cursor is visible, and then hit Enter key and scroll through each subtitle. If there's a misspelled word, it will be underlined in a red squiggly line so that it catches your eye and you can fix it before publishing the transcription. Now once you finish your English subtitles, you can download them from Amara and add them to your YouTube video. And someone can now come in here and do add a new language and select that language and hit continue. And they're able to have the English and translate it right over here and go from there. So that concludes this tutorial on using Amara to transcribe and timecode subtitles. If you'd like to read this step-by-step -step process, you can do that in the description below this video on translatesermons.com.